All right, what's going on guys? So today we're gonna wrap the front bumper on this Camaro. Uh, there's nothing really that fancy about it. I did take off the bumper to remove the fog light covers and the upper and lower grills. And we've done an inlay right now. So sorry, it's getting a little noisy in here, but we've done an inlay right now in this area right here because we're gonna have a lot of stretch, all right? So we don't wanna stretch the film into this area. What we wanna do is we wanna create an inlay. So what I've done is I've fed the vinyl into this area right here. And that way we have no zero tension, all right? So this way it's gonna last. Um, one thing is that I'm pretty sure this bumper has been repainted or it's not original, just simply because there is some pitting right here in the actual paint itself. It's not even a stone chip, it's like in, in the clear coat, like completely through. And uh, I'll show you some up close video in a second. There's a paint run right about here. And yes, there's some imperfections. On top of that, there were some screws that were used to mount the bumper onto the car that were not original. I know that because one side was different than the other. And uh, there are also screws missing. The main screws are missing holding this bumper on properly. So what can I do? I can try and throw some screws in there afterwards. See if I have any kicking around that'll fit. Otherwise, uh, it's gonna have to go the way it is. Uh, one thing I'm not really prepared for is to replace screws like that. Usually I don't, I keep clips around and keeping clips around is essential because clips do break and having extra clips is very important. Screws on the other hand, you should not be losing those. Uh, you should be sorting, when you, when you take them off the car, you should be sorting them out properly or leave them in a place that you know where they are exactly and how things go back together. Anyways, let's get to it. So let's do the knifeless tape right now. And oh yeah, and let's show you what the uh, condition of the bumper looks like. So we can see right there, right there. Try and move back a bit here. There we go. That is actually embedded in, and I don't think it's a stone chip. There's another one over there. Let's try and get you a good angle there. There it is. All right, so as far as the condition of the paint goes, it is not in perfect condition, but it is a daily driven car again. You can only expect so much from a car that is daily driven. So don't be hard on yourself when, when you do see some things that might show through the wrap. All right, so let me just face turn this around. So what we wanna do is do our knifeless tape. I already have this piece cut. On top of this, guys, this bumper is massive. It's not even, it's not even close to being small at all or a normal size. I've cut a 45 inch piece, 45 inches tall because this wraps underneath so far. So. Let's get the knifeless tape going. Got a little bunched up there. So then, we can get this piece out of the way. Cool. And then we can do the main piece. Now as far as laying knifeless tape goes on the next piece, we don't have to. If you want, I recommend if you want a straight cut to lay knifeless tape because, or some kind of a wrap cut tape because specifically wrap cut, um, that'll work too. But uh, if you want a nice clean line, you're going to want to lay knifeless tape for a long line like this. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to freehand such a long line. So you can freehand cut if you're really good at it. But even I'm not going to freehand cut this. I'm going to lay some knifeless tape in this section right here. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Cool. All right, so once we remove, once we do the knifeless tape, we have to remove the string underneath, or sorry, the tape that's left over underneath the edge, and then we have to go over the entire edge afterwards. So let me grab the knifeless tape again, and I'm gonna bring the camera in a little bit closer so you guys can see what I'm doing. So we want a very stress-free knifeless tape, all right? And having stress-free is important. Now, how do we go about doing this so that we have to, so that we can uh, grab the string is gonna be a little bit more challenging, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the knifeless tape somewhere there, if you can see. 
and I'm going to run the knifeless tape exactly on the edge of the film that's already there. This gives me about one eighth of an inch overlap. So not, do you not want to put the string on the knifeless tape? Sorry, you don't want to put the string of the knifeless tape on the edge of the vinyl, you want to put the edge of the tape and I'll show you this exactly what I mean once I finish this. We want to be laying the knifeless tape down stress free because it doesn't stick very well at all so we can't add tension to this. You can't stretch it into places and hope that it's going to stick. It has to um, it has to it has to be very relaxed. Sorry, I'm just concentrating on what I'm doing. I'm also thinking about moving the camera for you guys because I know you're probably not going to be able to see me in a second. So let's go this way. Cool. I wish my wife could be here every day, that way she could help me out, but fortunately she has her life to do. And I can't find any dedicated videographers, so it's just you and I guys. And the guys in the shop who are busy doing stuff too. So if you can see, I don't know if you can see, but I'm laying the string very much, sorry, the tape very close to the edge of the film. Once I get it up to a certain point, I'm going to cut off some excess. And again, it's going to be all about the end placement of where we put this knifeless tape. Sorry, the end of the knifeless tape placement. So again, we don't want to stretch into this recess. We want to feed the, the, the tape into it. Okay, so I'm going to go to about there and then I'm going to leave myself some extra and cut it off. I want to make sure that we're leaving extra on both ends. Another thing to remember, keep in mind, is that you don't want to put uh, your knife tape on the floor. It will pick up dirt and stuff, and that's not going to be good. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of fold it. Again, placement is difficult, right? So. I'm going to fold it and put it down right into the recess here. Cool. So we're going to want to go over it, make sure it's nice and air free and tight to the film itself. Let's go over to this side here. And you can see that I have it up in there and what I need to do now is bend it. Sorry if I don't have a good angle for you, but I need to bend it and kind of swing it 90 degrees. So that I'm on top of my inlay and not on top of the paint. Cool. So afterwards, once I do this, I can, I only have two screws holding in the bumper right now. So I can take off the bumper a little bit and then grab the knifeless tape from the inside. That's why it helps to remove the grills and stuff like that because we can start getting our hands on the film from the inside. Cool. On top of that, I've also elevated the front end of the car because it makes wrapping it easier. So right now, I'm going to grab my piece of my my major piece of vinyl. So the main piece, and I'm going to just grab the magnets. Give me one second. Let's slap a magnet down here. And oh yes, on top of that. This bumper, I couldn't remove the side marker on this side of the car because it's been siliconed on. So the bumper has been messed around with for sure, I know that, because that's not OEM. So again, this is gonna be a massive piece, guys. here so 
So this car in particular will use all, if you're doing the roof with the same color, which I did on this car, it's going to use nearly a full roll. And if by a full roll I mean 25 yards or 75 feet. Alright, so what's important here is that we have good positioning top and bottom. So I'm going to check out the bottom. We're probably good. I'm going to check out the top. Alright. Got a little dust on it. There we go. Alright, so let's do the fun part now. Let's, let's remove the backing paper. I've, it's not common to do a bumper this size. To make things a little bit easier, what you can do is you can put a uh, piece on the bottom. See, it's really difficult to do by yourself because I have such a large piece of vinyl that I need to get the backing paper off of. So what I'm gonna do is start grabbing it from here if I can. Start rolling it because the bottom doesn't have any tension on it, right? And it wants to flop around, so it makes removing the backing paper a little bit more tedious. Ah, huge pain. This is probably the hardest part of the whole wrap. Try not to wrinkle the film too much. It's just more stuff that we have to heat out, all right? And I, what I need to do is get this going. Should be better. There we go. All right. Whew. So on top of that, this car was saturated in salt because we're in Canada and we like to use salt oh, in Ontario and we like to use salt on our roads here. Other, other provinces, we don't really use salt. So, so a lot of, there's a lot of cleaning that had to be done before I even got to removing, doing, doing this fun bumper right now with you. Good times. Cool. So it looks like fun, right? Right. Let's anchor down our end and let's start by glassing this out. Yeah. We really need to bring quite a bit of stretch across. You can see that it's kind of wrapping itself underneath, but it's not. At the same time, it's not really. So. I need it to be much better than where it's at right now. So. Just get it going semi. So now we can see that We've got a lot of slack right here. You cannot take this and stretch it in this way. We have to draw attention across, all right? Super important. This is gonna be very challenging to do on my own because of the, the sheer height of this bumper. So what I need to do is I need to add heat. Didn't really want that to I was liking it the way it was. Let's just anchor it down there a bit. Cool, that'll help. So you can kind of see why you want to elevate this because it's going to be really close to the ground if you don't. 
And we're going to be picking up all kinds of stuff underneath the wrap. So let's get a bit of a stretch going here and see where we're at. So the top is looking great. I'll have to check out the bottom. It's not terrible. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and stretch it across the other way now. And what I want to do is anchor it there. emphasis of contouring the bottom around because we need that to really give the bumper a good wrap. We really got to get the bottom coming around. Okay. So I think we're doing pretty well. So as you can see, the glassing is starting to take place. Now for those of you who said that you're supposed to just glass out a bumper and squeegee it all without repositioning it, and that's how 3M has to be used, you can see that that's not possible. So we need to fix this up. This is a disaster. What I need it to do is come down. We need to fix this up right here. Shrink it down. Perfect. Got a little wrinkle there. Let's do it again. There we go. Cool. bit better. Let's get all this to come down now. So I do have another video on this bumper for you guys to see it. It's the matte metallic black that I did. doing a bumper like this with someone. Because it's just very challenging and easy to get bunched up and frustrated doing it on your own. Right now, I'm happy with where I'm at. I need to still contour this around more. I'm gonna fix up this little bit right here and then I'm gonna go at it again with more stretch coming across the bumper. The bottom's super easy to fix, so I don't really, I'm not really that concerned. It's more this area right here. Kind of, this is going to be like my main pole right here is, is getting this protection around. Kind of kneel down, it's a little bit easier.
So I'm gonna put my hand right now on the bottom, okay, see? And I'm watching, trying to keep everything tight and smooth as I pull this line across, okay? It's better. That was the pull that will set me up for this corner right here, which is gonna be the challenging top and bottom. All right, it's gonna be the challenging part. So again, let's, set, let's fix this up right here. I'm gonna shrink this down. There we go. I think for probably the last pull right here. Hopefully. Let's do it. We get some of the wrinkles out there. Take some of the stretch from over there. A little bit from here. I'll work my way down. Again, watch my lower hand placement. This is extremely important where you put this hand when you're pulling across. And watch my body positioning and watch how I contour the wrap around the bottom. When I teach, when I teach students, they have a huge issue with this right here, okay? Let's do it. Pretty good. I'm going to hold it for a second and just continue to finish that. What I want to do is I want to lock it in so it doesn't bounce back. Perfect. Now, up here, I think we're looking pretty good. Here, I'm not worried about. I can cut it here and then lift it up and then get in there because since we do have an inlay in there, it saves our butt, right? It's going to be a lot more beneficial to use an inlay, guys. film on the back feels very strange. It's kind of like this weird dry feeling. I've never, I've never felt it like that on Avery before. So I guess it's just how they kind of get the color to be what it is. So I'm just gonna lock all this in. I'm happy with where I'm at. I'm gonna finish off the top guys. Okay. So I wanna bring, I wanna bring you in for this. So let's check it out, all right? This corner can be a nightmare if we don't get enough stretch around. What I don't wanna do, heat it and let it, look, let it come down. But I do have to hold it. I do have to put tension on it to a point to keep those wrinkles away. Okay, I'm gonna start ironing them out. Cool. A little bit more this way, let's lock that in. What way do I have to pull for these for these ones? I have to pull that way. Okay. But maybe not. Let's shrink it. So very little tension on this. So we have to pull that way. We're always pulling perpendicular to the wrinkles. I want to heat this and see what happens. Okay, the wrinkles are going away. Don't have a lot of stretch and we're good. There's a bit of stretch right here. So what I'm going to do is draw it, draw it out. And gently again this is Avery it's super easy to overstretch this guys we do not want to overstretch this stuff a little bit of heat goes a long long way cool let's get over here now 
now. So same deal. And once I'm done this, we're gonna go through it. Trim it all up, get the knifeless tape going, all that fun stuff, all right? Hmm. So what I can do, I want more. See under here how that one is hugging underneath so much. Sorry, you can't see, can you? So underneath, it's hugging a lot more underneath, naturally. Well, over here it's not, it's very flush. I need to hug more. Now what's easier, the Challenger or this? I'd say, I don't know, they're both challenging. This is my, this is my worst side. So it's always more awkward for me going this way because I'm right-handed and I have to pull on the top with my right hand this, this way as opposed to having my more dominant hand on the bottom, which is not my left hand. So I need to get this out. There we go. Now I want to heat that more now because I don't like it. It looks so all wrinkled. There we go. Keep yourself level with the car. It's a lot of effort that goes into this. So I lifted that up just so I could have a nice even line and just let it shrink. We're gonna do let it shrink. Let it shrink down. Cool. So I'm gonna hold it up. Let the air come out. There we go. I'll deal with that wrinkle right there afterwards but I'll get this one right here now look at this on the bottom it's tapering in so much more it's definitely much more consistent let's get the heat done close by this down. There we go. Let's fix all this. Okay. Come to about here. So I'm going to squeeze you out some more of those. And then we're going to pull the film back again and do it, again, do it all over again. All right. All right. Pull it back to about this line. I've got too much film on the back side here, so I'm going to cut a bunch off. So again, a lot of emphasis around the bottom. And also around the top, because we need that to come up and around the corner.
separate this wrinkle right here. It's folded over itself. There we go. Before I do anything. that one there. Oh, this is not good. It's not helping me out. I have to come back a little further. Let's do it again. this right here, if you can see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> it's not cooperating. That little friggin' wrinkle right there. I need it off the edge. Uh, let me see what I can do right now. Okay. Having them on the edge like that is just not gonna work. Take this and shrink it down. See, this side is so much more difficult for me. So I want a better line right now. I don't like the line that I have. So there we go. with this now. I should be able to work with it. Sometimes you just have to troubleshoot things along the way, set yourself up. So I'm just kind of showing you that and that one side is not always going to be the same as the other as far as your ability goes. It can be difficult. Okay. So I'm trying to find out I can do right here. Okay, I think we're doing all right. Let's lock that in so those don't come back. And let's get that bottom swung around. Let's get all that out. So the film is going to start to bunch up on the bottom because there's so much tension running across. Okay. So now I can actually focus what I want to do heading down this way. Okay. Let's lock it in. So again, I'll show you what's going on over here. Oh, my battery's almost dead on this thing. 
last very long. So again, let's show you what's going on here. We need to heat and shrink. So we have these are these can be an issue. I'll show you how to deal with them. We don't mainly we don't want tension here. We can fold a lot around here. We're gonna work this down a little bit at a time. Or we can do this and take it over a larger area. I don't want to heat too much, just a bit. Because this we can actually tuck in pretty far. And there's a little trim piece that goes inside and everything to kind of hold it down. So these are things that you can think about. Over here we can, like when I remove the bumper, I can fold over quite a bit also. So it's not a big deal, but I chose to put more tension on the top side here as opposed to here where the fender makes contact with the bumper. And let's finish this off pretty much. What I want to do is a little bit more of a pull here, let it shrink a little bit. Wheels in the way. Cut off a whole bunch of that. do is alleviate the tension that's all on the edge here. Zoom out a bit for you. So I've got a lot of fingering going on right here. What I want to do is relax it. I'm going to bring the vinyl back a little bit further. So let's relax it again. Better. Gently. Oh, the wheels in the way, it sucks. <laughs> so it helps take things off the car, right? Things get in your way. I have to go on this side. So where I'm at right now is a common problem. We're running into a lot of tension, all right? What we don't want to do is stretch at the very ends. It's okay to stretch right here, but we don't want to stretch right here very much. So we want to keep that pretty relaxed. And now, now for the fun part, underneath. I mean, this whole thing is fun. What am I talking about? What I'm going to do is find a line. Where's that knifeless tape? Somewhere right about there. So now we can see that I have access to this one. want to do is shrink it and let it all come down this one here we'll get now see done let it all come down and let it overlap the knifeless tape Overlapping the knifeless tape right now. I have one more over here, right there. Let's 
חום. Take care of the bottom. It's time to get down and dirty. So imagine this car was white. This car is black, so if I don't wrap fully underneath, it's not that big of a deal. But if it was white, you're gonna want it. So you're gonna wanna put an inlay down there somewhere probably, because doing it in one piece is probably gonna be next to impossible with doing it by yourself. Maybe if you have extra hands, you'd be able to do it, but it's gonna be extremely difficult. Let's glass and stretch all this wrinkled stuff out. I knew that was gonna fall off. So what I'm trying to do is guide it down. Oh, I'm gonna make it, I think. That's pretty impressive, actually. It's nice to impress yourself once in a while. One of the disadvantages of Avery is that it really, really sticks well to itself. I don't know why, it just does. Other films are not, are not quite as bad. Keep it glassed out while I squeegee it. thing goes like a foot and a half underneath the car. It's crazy. By the way, the Ferrari is not done. It's kicking my butt. It's hard to wrap.
Opinion, if you guys want my honest opinion, do this in an inlay down here. It'll just be way easier. If you want to challenge yourself, and go for it, do it in one piece. But as like a DIY, on a DIY point of view, I would just probably do an inlay on the bottom or leave it black if your car is black. Because no one's gonna see the black. pouch. I knew that was going to fall off as soon as I laid down. I need my blade and then we're good. All right. I'm just going to finish up this side over here same as I did on the other side guys that I showed you already. So I'm just going to do this quick. Sorry guys, I think I lost you for some of that there. Um, video didn't record when I hit record. So we've got the bottom done, we've got the top done, and uh, I'll do the fog lights right now. So I'm just gonna cut a hole, super straightforward. And then we're gonna stretch in a little bit, but we cut a hole so that this is more like our relief cut. We don't need to go that far in with these. So as soon as I find where I need to be, I can start putting relief for the rest of it. Yeah, so I don't need to go very far in, maybe like an inch. So if I do relief there, relief there, it helps with the rest of it. Again, it's not a heavy stretch, so I'm not too worried about it. A little air sitting in the corner there. So again, let's do more relief cuts right there. Let's finish off the top. Probably want to use a wrap glove. Cool. Let's trim out the rest. just slap back in there. It's about all I need to do for that. Let's push that down. Let's push that down. Let's do this side. I mean, I know, I know that I can cut this hole a little bit bigger now, which 
which makes even more relief. All right. the excess. What we don't want to do is block the holes that the fog light cover needs to be placed into. So be, keep that in mind. All right, now it's just the outside, guys. So let's do over here first. So for here, I have this lousy side marker or indicator or whatever you want to call it in the way, which is awesome because it's siliconed in and I'm not about to take it out and re-silicone it. That's just going to slow things down. I don't know, it might break if I take it out, so let's just leave it there. So we want to heat up our edge, make sure that we don't have too much pullback. And then what I'm going to do is tuck all of this in. So that's why I loosened up the bumper. Put emphasis on the corner. A little more emphasis on the corner here. So I'm going to leave all that in there. It's just going to be added security since there is quite a bit of tension around that edge. I'm going to finish off all this. Again, there's a plastic cover that goes over this inside piece here. more involved. So before I get too far, what I want to do is trim out a bunch of this. I'm going to go from the middle. If you know that you have a lot of tension around an edge, leave a little extra film, it's not a big deal. It's, it's better to have the added security than to worry about something pulling back. So now that I have, actually let's just finish off the indicator area. I'm cutting more on the indicator side. You guys can see that, probably not. There we go. So I'm cutting more on the indicator side because I want to leave myself a little excess to tuck in. stick is going to come in really handy. I 
because it's such a tight squeeze. The normal squeegee won't really get in there. My concern is that I might be hitting the silicone that's there. And it won't let me push it all the way in. And we have to be very careful because I don't want to puncture the film. Just heat up the corner here, smooth it out. Perfect, I'm happy with this. I'll slap the screw back in and get rid of the tape. Just want to put the screw back in to hold the bumper there while I do the other side. Let's do the other side. So you see the other side doesn't have an indicator So same deal guys, remove the screw. Get this back slightly. And we're gonna hit it with some heat. Use my fingers, it's not a big deal if I use my fingers or the squeegee as long as you're getting the job done. Perfect. There's my knife. Once I finish this, I'm going to slap it all back together and we get to see what it looks like. bit too much here. I don't quite need this much, so I'm going to get rid of some. As you can see, I've already done this section here. Perfect. All right. I'm gonna take the bumper off and slap in the grills and stuff. It'll take me like two minutes, but I'm gonna pause the video while I do that and show you what it looks like when it's all done. All right, guys. It's okay, you can talk. <laughs> All right guys, uh, front bumper's finished. Car is actually finished. I just waited until I, uh, to do this video, I waited until I finished the rest of the car. So I'll finish off the driver's side. I'm gonna show you guys the bumper right now and then we can check out the rest of the car afterwards. I need to do two separate videos for a walk around and one to show you the bumper as part of the bumper video. So let's do it. 
All right, let's check it out. So pretty simple, everything goes back together really nicely. That's it. So actually not that simple because this car's bumper is probably the tallest bumper I've ever wrapped in my life. And yeah, not, not a lot of fun doing it on the underneath side, but uh, yeah, you could do an inlay under here if you ever wanted to. Guys, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys want to see more, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to do a walk around video of the car right now. Thanks for watching. Take care.